Welcome to Dancing Moon Songcast. I'm Scott Simpson, casting from Dancing Moon Studio in Spearfish Canyon, on the north end of the Black Hills of South Dakota, right on the banks of the Spearfish Creek. If you'd like to follow along, you can download a free PDF from my lyric book from scottsimpsonmusic.com forward slash lyrics. And of course, you can find links to all my music there as well. So let's get casting and find out what song we're going to talk about this time. Well, this is episode number seven in our Keys to My Head series. We're taking a listen to and talking about all the songs on the new album, Keys to My Head. And uh, song number seven is called Making Our Escape. So we'll give a listen to Making Our Escape and then... uh, Chit chat about it on the other side. <laughs> it's dark in here. Yeah, it's dark in here. Most days I don't even hear. Superheroes 
was making our escape Did he ever make his escape? Making Our Escape from uh, Keys to My Head, uh, song number seven, track number seven on that album. Um, we've talked about this before, that uh, a lot of the songs on this album were uh, written um, from prompts um, that were uh, suggested by the uh, 2020 uh, FOM group, uh, February Album Writing uh, Month. Um, and, um, they do that every, every year. And I was, I participated in it on, in, in the year 2020, um, right before, right before our, uh, our lovely pandemic really, really nailed us all down. So it gave, it gave me a, a place where I could, I could do some songwriting and then, and then have a whole lot of time to, you know, sort through and finish things off as well. So, uh, so I guess that, I guess, you know, there's the, there's a silver lining, I suppose. Um, but anyway, this song was written from the prompt, uh, an inanimate object, uh, giving an inanimate object voice. And this was actually the first one I wrote in, in response to that prompt um, because it came to me very, uh, very immediately because um, as a child, I had given this inanimate object um, voice all the time anyway. Um, I have this uh, this teddy bear um, that I do I don't ever remember receiving it because I was so young when I received it that uh, it's, it was just always there. And he's a little black and white. I think I think intended to be a panda. But my grandmother, uh, Grandma Mildred Stockburger, uh, made this for me. Um, when I was born and I received it and it was always there. Just it, It's one of those things, you know, sometimes there are things that are ever present in our growing up years. And um, this teddy bear was. And in, in fact, there was never a time as I got older, certainly there was, as I got older, I didn't spend as much imagination, imaginary time with the teddy bear. I moved on to other things. But... The teddy bear was always there and has always been there. Now, in recent years, um, he w had been uh, in a box, in a box kind of in storage and um, still a, a special place in, in my heart. Um, not interested ever in getting rid of him, uh, but in a box. And so when this prompt came up, I thought, wow. I wonder what that's like, you know, and I suppose, you know, echoes of Toy Story and, you know, other, other films and things that have, you know, brought to life children's uh, toys, children's companions came, probably had some influence, but what's that like being locked away in a box and... Uh, after having been, you know, probably, you know, when you're a little kid, one of your most important relationships early on may be those imaginary friends or those, um, those bears, those dolls, those um, sometimes our, our pets. Um, and, and it's where we work out a lot of things, I think, connected with identity, who I am what I care about, what's important to me in life, what, uh, what I want to be, what I want to do. Um, and these things like this teddy bear help us work through those things. And I think they still have resonance for us in our relationships as adults. They're, 
they're the place where we learn some of our first lessons about friendship, about empathy, about caring. So, uh, so it occurred to me uh, to place myself uh, once again in the perspective of my bear. Um, this time, a bear who's um, whose good friend uh, has not checked in on him for a long, long time, decades, and he's been waiting in a box with a with a few other things that were important to that young me um, back in the day. So, anyway, and I'll make sure. Um, you know, the we started we started the. Um, as we are in this album, starting every song with a a sound recording, we have a we have a child's laughter at the beginning of this, which is just delightful. Every time I hear it, it it's uh, it's a nice way to start a song, and it, and it takes me back to what the bear um, what he rec- represents to me. Um, but um, but. Anyway, we'll take a look at the at the lyrics and talk a little bit about um, about uh, the song and uh, do a little exploring, making our escape. It's dark in here. It's dark in here. Most days, I don't even hear, don't even hear a thing. No, not a thing. Not a thing. So many years. It's been so many years since he came to check on me. Break open a box of tears. Not sorrow. No, not sorrow. Just love. Tears of love. Um... So you should know about um, I, I've 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 certainly been confessional in the past about my uh, introversion. The other thing you should know about me is that I do make strong attachments to uh, to things, to objects. I I recall as a child getting very attached to certain things, like like letting go of my first bike was traumatic. Even though I had outgrown it, it didn't fit me anymore. It just, it stored all of these memories. I remember struggling over throwing away pieces of paper. Um, I remember lots of, of objects that just seemed to possess all of the experiences and all of the stories that happened around those objects. And getting rid of them or parting with them or, or, or losing them felt like losing some part of those experiences. Um, I recognize that that's, that's the recipe for hoarding and I'm not a hoarder. I will, I'm, I'm willing to confess a lot of things, but I will confess to you that I am not a hoarder. I have gone through stages of getting rid of lots of things, but then there are these things like this bear, like a few other things that I have that I don't think I probably will ever get rid of unless I pass them on to, uh, to someone who uh, who may care uh, about them uh, in in some way close to what the way I do, um, but so that this bear is like that, and so it's not hard for me to empathetically embed myself into uh, the bear and to think about what what is that like to be left alone in a box for decades separated and wondering uh, this person that I spent like literally every uh, every waking hour with and and all the sleeping hours as well at one point in his life what what's going on with him now I was the uh, the carrier of all his dreams I was the receiver of all his secrets I was the um, I was the possessor of of, of what he wanted to express in the world. And so what has he done? Where has he been? And why am I in this box? So we get to the, uh, the course the first time. Yeah, we used to fly above the bed. Him on his back, me overhead. 
He put the words right in my mouth. So I'd say in a mighty shout, We're off to save the whole wide world, every boy and every little girl. One time he even made me a cape. We were superheroes making our escape. So, um... So, yeah, I do recall, and, and, and I, I suppose uh, the bear became very much a superhero for me. It was important to me that, that the bear was able to fly, um, and, and, I, and I do recall those times of laying on my bed, and, uh, laying on my back on my bed, and, and him flying over, and probably I was making all kinds of flying noises. I do recall a time when I asked my mom, do we have some fabric or something? I'd like to, I want to make a cape because I felt like he needed to be a superhero. You know, if you fly, you got to have a cape, you know, to flap in the wind. And I suppose I wanted him to be a superhero because I was sorting through my ideas of what was good and what was bad and what I wanted to do in doing good things. In, in making the world better. And I felt like the bear wanted to do that too. I, th I felt like he, I keep calling him the bear because I, I, I don't think I ever named him. We were just so close that we didn't, he didn't need a name. Um, and and, and maybe, that's, maybe that says he was an extension of me. Maybe he was me or something. I don't know. Um, I suppose if I chosen to go down the psychology route, I'd, I'd be able to tell you that. But, um, but yeah, and, and the way um, he put the words right in my mouth, you know, I, I do think, I do think in so many ways, toys like this, especially a bear or maybe a doll, depending on, on the child and what they have, um, we put our words, we put, we sort, the things we're sorting through the ideas we're sorting through at that very early age and putting things into words, we put those words into their mouths so we can hear them back from the bear, from the doll, from the whatever it is. Hear them back see and test them out and see if that is that, is that what I think? Is that what I... Is that the way things are? Um, I think it's incredibly healthy to have a bear, to have a doll, to have something like this, something. And maybe pets can be that way. I, I know certainly for me now, I think probably my dogs in many ways play this role for me still. So we get into the next uh, verse. Is it dark out there? I wonder if it's dark out there too. He doesn't have his favorite bear. See, a guy needs his favorite bear to fly. Oh, to dream. To have a place to put his words. Yeah, yeah. I'm not alone. I suppose I'm not alone in here in this box. Next to me is his pocket knife, a rock he found, and a compass that doesn't point north anymore. Yeah, we're all just waiting here together. Like a time capsule, he forgot to open up. So, as I was writing the song, I was was thinking about these odds and ends of things that I've held on to that uh, at, at some point were especially important to me, like the bear, uh, rocks, certain rocks, a few rocks, um, a compass that I had that uh, was given to me and that doesn't work and and some things like that, and, and um, you know, every once in a while, and, and I, it, part, of the, uh, part of the bad thing about being this attached to objects is that when I go into the closet or when I go into the storage uh, place, wherever that storage place is, and I open up a tub or a box, and I begin to look at these things, all of those stories begin to spill out um, and connect back in with me, just coming from an object, coming from a, a letter, coming from a, a notebook, coming from a, a bear, coming from a, a pocket knife. All of these things start to spill back in, and I am lost for 
a day or two. And so it's, it is. And once again, this is the frightening uh, precursor to hoarding. To dig into some of those boxes is something that takes so much emotional um, energy for me because I'm, I'm literally reliving so many different chapters that it's very, it's very difficult. Um, doing it like this in a song is much easier and less time-consuming and catchier. Um, but, but I guess what I'm drawing on is, is that sense that, you know, why do I stay away from looking in that box? Because I know if I do, if I open that up, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be there for a while. I'm going to be lost in, in, in reverie and nostalgia and memory and, and sorting through, reflecting all of those things. And there's an element of guilt there, too, obviously. There's an element of guilt in here that I haven't, I, I haven't pulled the bear out in a long time. And I have guilt connected with objects, you know? A pocket knife I haven't carried in my pocket since I was 15. What well, pocket knife deserves that? I know, it's crazy. But that's where this song kind of takes me um, to those 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 things we sort through. I think maybe sometimes with objects, like I said, as a child with a bear, with a doll. But they also have to do with our empathy for other human beings. Am I an empathetic person? Am I a thoughtful person? Am I a reflective person? I think we learn that sometimes with, certainly with our family, our parents, but also with objects, with toys, with pets. We learn, we learn to be empathetic and thoughtful and reflective. And then hopefully we turn around and visit that, that practiced muscle on other human beings so that I don't just use people and throw them away. And maybe sometimes we don't do that, make that transfer. I don't know. Sometimes maybe we don't. I think this song is calling me and calling all of us to make that transfer, though. To say, hey, you know, it matters. Reconnecting with a friend matters. Reflecting on those experiences matters. Knowing who I am by knowing these things that I sorted through, even at an incredibly early age, matters. So we get back into the, the chorus, and uh, the chorus is, is doubled here. Yeah, we used to fly above the bed, him on his back, me overhead. He put the words right in my mouth, so I'd say in a mighty shout, we're off to save the whole wide world, every boy and every little girl. One time he even made me a cape. We were superheroes making our escape. Yet yeah, we used to fly above the bed, him on his back and me overhead. He put the words right in my mouth, so I'd say in a mighty shout, we're off to save the whole wide world, every boy and every little girl. One time he even made me a cape. We were superheroes making our escape. We were superheroes making our escape. Did he ever make his escape? I wonder, did he ever make his escape? We're all making our escape. We're superheroes making our escape. We're all making our escape. Um, and of course, in that last chorus, uh, one of the things, just to talk a little bit about the music, um, in all of the songs on this, I, almost all of them, I, I made a, a deliberate choice to be very judicious about um, um, about reverb or or uh, um, 
a delay. I, I didn't put many effects at all. I kept, I kept the main vocals very dry. I wanted them to be very intimate and very close. And especially in this one, given the fact that I was speaking for a bear in a shoebox, it needed to have this close, close, immediate feeling. Like we're sitting three inches apart, um, listening to the bear. Until we get to this chorus, this extra long chorus. And then, of course, we've, we've got a lot of uh, vocal harmonies. Uh, mine and, uh, and Cheryl, my wife. Uh, um, and they're kind of soaring. And as we sing about him on his back, me overhead... The bear is flying, and, and, and in that part, the, that lead vocal from the bear um, soars up. Um, if you listen, and most helpful probably with headphones, um, uh, the reverb and the, the distance between ourselves and the bear expands, and he's flying above us and soaring, and, and there's, a, there's a moment of that imagination of, of what that's like, of flying of making an escape. Escape from what? Well, I think it's about imagination. I think it's about an escape from being defined and determined by those around you or by situations. Taking your life into your own control and saying, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to, and the, the, the sky's the limit. And, uh, and the bear is wondering, did he ever make his escape? Did he ever do all those things? That he, did he say, ever, ever save every little boy and every little girl? Did he ever become that superhero? Because um, I'm here in this box, you know. In a really selfless way. The bear is saying, you know, what we dreamed about was really all about you. And that's okay. I, I, I'm hoping that, that he made his escape. Because I know it's probably dark out there too. Like it is in this box. And I think we all have those moments when we feel like we're in some dark box. Locked away. Uh, trapped by circumstance, by others um, who define us or situations that define us. And, uh, and maybe things like the spare, maybe things like the, the experiences of, of that imaginative play, um, visioning the big things I want to do, those times give us an escape. Maybe even translate into a true um, escape, but at least in our moments of feeling enclosed and locked in, they give us an escape that is um, maybe just momentary, um, but at least lends hope and hopefulness so that you don't feel just lost in that small box, in that small life, in that, that small existence, that you know you can make choices and have hope for being able to fly, being able to escape, being able to, to grow large again. Um, so... Musically, we've talked a little bit. Once again, the main the main instrument in this was the uh, um, nylon six string guitar, um, and uh, and that is uh, the instrument I, I wrote the song on. Um, and um, once again, it's it's a really I, I think for me, I, I certainly there's a lot of nostalgia there, but I do think this is about the lessons that we learn concerning empathy and concerning care for others that we learn oftentimes with inanimate objects, especially as children. I, I, I'm a huge proponent of 
play for children, of imaginative play, and of the kinds of objects and toys that promote that, that give me, give us as human beings opportunities to work out scenarios in play, figure out who I am, what I'm doing, what I want to do, what I expect I'll be doing. Because when we, when we get to a place where we can imagine those things and, or verbalize those things, that's the first step in making them happen. I would guess that any successful person in any field, whatever they've done, at some point imagined or visioned themselves toward that end we don't just wake up one day and suddenly we're something. We, we imagine our way into it. We role play our way into it sometimes. So, so there we have it. Making our escape. Um, you can find all my songs, uh, including the new album, Keys to My Head, um, at scottsimpsonmusic.com. Uh, of course, you can stream them on uh, Apple, Apple Music, um, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, um, iHeartRadio, anywhere. Anywhere you like to stream your music, you can find the album there. Also look for our other new project, Nana Papa. I've um, got a third um, single coming out from Nana Papa. These are songs for... Uh, children and families, um, and so I'm, I'm super excited about that project. That's myself and my wife Cheryl. A lot of, a lot of new, fresh things. Um, um, experimenting with different directions uh, with this new project, and uh, that's that's super exciting. This this song, you know, that we just talked about, is one that could be a Nana Papa song for sure. I, it, it's about the importance of play for children. It's about the importance of those early relationships, even those early relationships with inanimate objects. And um, so I don't know, I don't know what, what your your bear was when you were a kid, but I'd, I'd encourage you to think about that. What did that thing, whatever it is, that doll, that bear, that pet, uh, that bike, what did it teach you? What did it bring you? What, did, what are you still drawing from it in uh, in your life now helping you to move forward with things thank you so much for joining me um this um podcast is ostensibly about songwriting but as you can see it's really about i think being human and uh figuring that out and making sense of what that means and how we grow and how we learn and how we connect with others and with the, the world in general and with the lovely, sometimes um, amazing objects that we find present near us that uh, are parts of our lives. All of, it's, all of it's a big part of the story. So thank you for joining me for another episode of Dance and Loon Songcast. Stay tuned and be well.